Welcome to Terribly Accurate and to the month of March. In this video, we are going to look at the overall vibe for the month. Will you find your pot of gold? Are you gonna get lucky in love? Where do you need to push your luck to get ahead? What rain will be hitting your life? What will the rainbow after be? And then if you stick around all the way to the end of the video, you will find out what is your crystal of the month and what is it good for? How's it gonna help you? As well as figuring out how you can get a free reading from me. This video is for Capricorn. Sun, moon, rising, but not Venus. Unless you are spying on somebody else's um, love forecast, for example, then it's for their Venus. But this video right here is going to show you how to get the most out of these videos that I make or that anybody else makes for taroscopes, horoscopes, whatever, or even ones that you would read online. And one more thing, there are links below to connect you to the taroscopes that I've been making online for all zodiac signs. And now let's get started. Capricorn. What is your overall vibe for the month? And it's the magician in reverse. I think Taurus had a simple or um, a similar thing. So if you have heavy earth in your chart, Capricorn and Taurus specifically, you might want to go back and look at that. Um, I don't necessarily think it started in the same way. I think theirs was not about thinking about the past, but they had elements of that, um, especially for singles, which was like, hey, you know, what are you manifesting? Maybe you're not manifesting anything. And if you're not manifesting anything, maybe you ought to be. And so I decided to include below a link to a worksheet that'll kind of help you figure out how to do that. And um, maybe also some of the missteps that kind of come along with manifesting what it is that we want. So I will make a note to self that maybe I should make a video on that. It's been a long time on my list. Hopefully I'll get to it sooner than later, but I guess we'll see. Okay, <laughs> I don't like to guarantee anything. Thing I can't um, hold on to but uh, so yeah you know the vibe is like if we don't ask for things if we don't know what we want then how are we supposed to get them so keeping that in mind as we move forward will you find that pot of gold what's up with your finances and so the first thing that they say is like if that's a focus you can totally dominate in that regard you have full control over what happens to your finances so if things suck this month it's not because something unexpected happened it's because you didn't work hard enough right because you took a trip um but if you set things out like you plan them you're totally in control of what happens and so this means this could be a very favorable month for you financially should you have a good plan in place should you know what you want should you know how much you want to work how much you want to earn set those goals because um like i often say you know oftentimes if they're not specific enough with the law of attraction for example you know we say hey i want more money next day we find a penny on the ground and we don't even appreciate it because um you know, we don't really consider that more money. But meanwhile, the universe is like, fuck yeah, hooked a sister up. You got more money. It's like, no, I want to earn this much more by the end of the month. Or I want to have this much in my bank account is even better. Because we don't necessarily want to work for the money we get. We just want to have it, right? Okay, so will you get lucky in love if you are single? Oh, sh shit, there's a lot of stuff coming out here. Okay, so the first thing that they say is you might not be confident. It is hard to believe that you will be lucky in love this month. Now, part of the reason why is because you've got a lot going on, a lot to balance, you know, the day-to-day -day life, especially if you're trying to work more to make more, um, as we mentioned previously. And um, it's not so much an emotional thing. Your emotions might be up and down slightly here and there, but it'll be more of a subconscious energy where it kind of ebbs and flows a little bit if that is the case for you. However, for most of you, it's just a practical reality of things. Do I have time to be dating and things like that? Now, um, it's a little bit also of how do I even feel about that? Do How do I feel about online dating, for example? Um, you know, is my life maybe awesome right now without a partner? And so it's hard to get excited about looking for love. And so, you know, slow and steady kind of wins the race here. If you decide that this is something that you want, it is okay to take your time to take it slow or to put it off until later months, all right? Now, if you are coupled, what's up in March? And they're like, this is not the luckiest month, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad month for you. It's just like, hey, if you have couples goals, hashtag couple goals, 
Um, moving forward, that might be a little bit hard for you. This month, it's just not lucky. Like Things don't necessarily work out. So if you wanna take it to the next level, you're hoping for that proposal. You're hoping that you'll move in together. This It's just like the timing is a little bit off this month and it doesn't necessarily mean anything's wrong in your relationship. It's just like not the best time for it. And so this is also not a month in which you should be a oh, mother. And so this is also not a month in which you should be talking it to death, pushing it forward, telling your partner like, hey, let's talk about this, let's plan about this, whatever, um, talking about next steps because it's not gonna really get you anywhere. Um, just luck isn't in your favor. Like even if your partner was like, hey, yeah, let's do this, you wouldn't be able to find the right house, the right apartment to move into together, okay? So um, if you are, Whoa. So here's some exciting stuff. If you are in a complicated relationship, it's on again, off again, it's not Facebook official, but you're talking to each other or something like that, there is a lot of hope and um, sort of excitement for you this month. It's like you are, have figured out how to balance in this potential relationship or this complicated relationship the difference between how you're feeling and reality and then there's a lot of like wishes and hopes and wants and dreams that you'll see here in that card but they all culminate into something more bigger and beautiful than you maybe would have imagined for yourself or for this relationship at the end of the day so the star card i often call it um the hope card it's like what do i hope for and they're saying hey put your hopes out there because what you're hoping will happen here is not only likely to happen for you, but something even better is likely to happen for you. A partner who, um, somebody will be like, okay, not a partner. Um, the person that you're dealing with here is likely to give more to you in this relationship than maybe they would have previously. Whether that is of time, energy, love, attention, affection, whatever, um, this is the month to sit back and receive. And anything that you give to this situation, you should be getting back six to ten fold. So the more conversations you start, the more attention you're going to get back and things like that. Um, so that's really, really good news for you. Anything else for those in a complicated situation here? They're saying now for those of you who choose to look at the negative side of this, maybe, you know, as we mentioned, there's a lot of hope here. If you are focusing on the fact that maybe, hey, this isn't official yet, um, or you're focused on your fears, well, it might not go as well for you as it will for the rest of you who are choosing to see the positives here, who are choosing to look at what's going right instead of what's going wrong. For those of you here who are not focusing on what's going right, they say, remember that this person and this experience doesn't necessarily have shit to do with history you know, with um, things the way they might have gone with this person previously or the way that things might have ended up with other people when you've been in a similar complicated situation. They're saying don't take much from this as though it's, um, you know, sort of your destiny or divined it's supposed to be this way because the only constant is change, right? As a society in general, we mess this up a lot. We have a lot of conflicting interests that we buy into um, or adopt as mindset. So for example, we will say history repeats itself, but then we also say the only constant is change. So it's like basically your choice when we go backwards, right? What is it you choose to believe? That history repeats itself when it's negative or that the only constant is change? And so they're saying, you know, um, whatever is going on here it's going to be better for you if you spiritualize it if you stay focused on the positive and what it is you desire and what you want as opposed to um you know focusing here on what is going wrong like it's a basically a self-fulfilling prophecy your attitude because if you focus on what's going right here and what is good and the potential that it has then you get that happily ever after right so awesome um, so looking at where you need to push your luck to get ahead, 
you know, what is it that you should be working to attract in your life? They're saying luck isn't in your favor this month. You know, we kind of started with that actual energy or vibe. Um, we're not necessarily going to get anything that we want this month just by sheer luck, right? This is a month of co-creation. What we do actually matters. What we work towards actually matters. Our mindset super fucking matters this month. Um, so what is it that you should be trying to get something new and different something that you haven't experienced in the past because that's what's going to make you much happier and so as i mentioned that worksheet below that'll really help you you know because there's an exercise in contrast what i didn't like before and versus like then what i would like in the future i want you to like work through those things and really focus because doing the work is gonna help you get what you want towards the end of the day. So if you know what you want already, awesome. Go ahead and throw that in the comment section below. You know, just tell me, I am getting what I want and this is what it is. You know, I want a brand new car. I wanna make $10,000 um, in passive income this month. It doesn't matter what it is because when you put it into writing, do you know what happens? It makes it real. It makes it tangible. It takes it from the thought space and it puts it out into the universe as an actual thing. And when we write things down, we're spelling out words. And when we're spelling, we call it that because we're casting a spell, okay? So um, what will be the sort of rain in your life this month? And they're like, you know, for some of you, it, you just might not be reaching those money or job goals or you might be feeling a little bit imbalanced like you're working too hard not getting enough rest it's that sort of like what is sustainable vibe but how does the rainbow come in association to that and they're like don't get caught up in the details when we get too detailed when we get caught up there then um what is the phrase like you lose the forest through the or the trees you lose the forest through the trees? Something along those lines. If you know the answer to that, let me know actually in the comments because <laughs> I always screw that one up. And when I say that, I just confirmed I'm gonna keep doing that to the universe, didn't I? But the point is, is I know for example, me personally, I might go to make a business card, right? And I want something just so. And so I might spend, you know, two hours trying to like get the exact right angle for something, whereas, it could have just been good enough because it's a detail only I would have noticed and I could have spent those two hours doing something much more productive and that's kind of the vibe here is what they're saying. If you can not get too detailed, if you can focus on the big picture, um, awesome. Because if you don't, if you get hamstrung there, if you get caught up, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to achieve those big goals that you set for yourself. Okay, because this month is about how you're spending your time and your resources and time is your best, biggest, most um, precious resource because it's the only one that's not replenishable. Okay, so um, now it's time to look at your power crystal of the month that can kind of help you get through this month and help you achieve at your highest levels, reach all of the goals that you want. And here that is Royal Aura. There isn't a tremendous of information regarding which angels are associated with Royal Aura or how to care for it because like many of the Aura crystals, it is a quartz crystal that was tampered with by human beings and therefore we don't have centuries of records to document this for us at our disposal. Because Royal Aura does not have well-documented information on how to cleanse and recharge your crystal for use, it's recommended that one would use moonlight and or incense to do so. The Royal Aura is associated to both the throat chakra, the blue one on your neck, as well as the crown chakra, the white one floating right above your head. Royal Aura is used to create peace, calm, to relieve stress and tension. And the stress and tension relief will work not only on the physical body, but also for your emotional state as well as any room or space that it is placed in, so it's a good crystal to put on display in your home or office. Royal Aura helps increase clear and more effortless communication, and it's a fantastic stone that will help you have deeper perception and to receive messages from your spirit guides or angels or even higher self in meditation. When you use Royal Aura crystals, 
Your thinking will be more intuitive, it will be more clear, and the Royal Aura Stone helps you to stay on your spiritual path. The Royal Aura Crystal will help to open up the third eye and it helps you to trust in your spiritual guidance. Not only does it help you to trust your spirit guides and angels, your higher self, but it helps you to develop trust between other people and to trust yourself. Royal Aura increases understanding of other people as well as empathy for others, and it helps you to share information and teach others. Royal Aura is a great crystal to help you clear your mind, and it also releases old emotions that hold us back. It removes energy and manifestation blocks that we just don't want to have. If you use this crystal frequently and often, it can slow visible signs of aging, and it can also reverse long-term chronic illnesses over an extended period of time. So this is a gradual process, but you might find that your wrinkles start to disappear and that your arthritis symptoms feel a little bit less if you continually use this stone. Royal Aura helps you also to experience more vivid dreams. So if you use this in tandem with an amethyst, for example, you'll have very bright and vivid dreams that you would more easily be able to interpret. The Royal Aura Stone is also known as Siberian Blue Quartz, Flame Aura, and Indium. Mm -hmm.